we're going to talk about atomic structure and how atoms are put together. We're going to take what we know about what Dalton and Thomson and Rutherford all did to discover things and see if we can shed some new light on that and put it in the modern view. Okay? So it turns out the atom is not the smart, smallest particle of matter. It is the smallest part of an element. Different elements have different atoms, but it is not the smallest particle of matter. Atoms themselves are made up of different things. Okay? They're made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now we know Rutherford discovered the dense positive center of a nucleus where the protons are at. We know Thomson discovered the electrons. We need to talk a little bit about the neutrons. So protons and neutrons both are found in the nucleus of the atom. And the nucleus is actually what Rutherford's experiment found. Okay? The nucleus contains most of the mass, but it's tiny. Okay? It's very, very small. If an atom was the size of a baseball stadium, then the nucleus would be like a baseball in the middle of the stadium, and the electrons would be out in the bleachers. Okay? So the electrons occupy the space around the nucleus. They take up most of the most of an atom's space if you will but they're tiny compared to the protons and neutrons so an atom it really turns out is mostly empty space now if we take a look at the electrons and we try to figure out what's going on with them remember Thomson said they're the negative particles and we haven't changed that the charge of an electron is one minus it's a negative charge they are in the cloud around the nucleus they like I said, that cloud is mostly empty space. The electrons move around in the space around the nucleus, and they zip around pretty fast. They're always transitioning, moving around, but that space is mostly empty. Okay? And the paths or regions around the nucleus where the electrons move are called orbitals. And we'll get a little bit more in-depth on orbitals later, but for now, um, we just know electrons move in orbitals. Okay? Atoms have equal numbers of electrons and protons. This is important. Okay. The fact that atoms have equal numbers of electrons and protons means that the atom is neutral because protons and electrons are going to exactly balance each other and cancel each other's charge. Now, we want to take a little bit of a look at protons. Okay, So our electrons on the outside, they're zipping around, they're negative. Our protons are positive. They have a 1 plus charge. You'll notice that's exactly the opposite of the charge of an electron. Like I said, it balances the charge of uh, of an electron. So protons and electrons, they cancel each other out, which means the atom is going to be neutral overall. Now I say that the protons are very massive, but you got to understand we're still talking about atoms. Okay? They're about 2,000 times more massive than an electron, but they're still incredibly, incredibly, incredibly tiny. So they're massive compared to an electron, but they're still basically the most minuscule thing you know that we can talk about okay and this is a super important point it determines the element the number of protons determines what element I have atoms of different elements have different numbers of protons in the nucleus the more protons the heavier the element is um, and the further right or down on the periodic table it's going to be um, lighter elements have fewer protons so the lightest element in in the world that we know of is hydrogen and it has one proton and one electron Okay. Now, the number of protons, because it is so important and because atoms of different elements have their own number of protons, is called atomic number. We're going to look at that a little bit in more detail later, but the atomic number is the number of protons. Okay? And remember, since protons and electrons balance, it's also the number of electrons. Okay? Now, the protons are found in the nucleus, the dense center of the atom, with the neutrons. Now, neutrons tend to mess with people because neutrons are neutral. Neutral neutrons, they have no charge. None. Okay? So I'm going to say it again. Neutral neutrons have no charge. They're neutral. They have no charge. They're not plus, they're not minus, they're neutral. They have no charge. Okay? Their role is to stabilize the atom. They're almost the same mass as a proton. They're a little bit more massive than a proton, but not enough to care about. Okay? Um, and all they do is they help hold the protons together in the nucleus, help make the atom more stable. But there's no rule that says the nucleus has to have a fixed number of neutrons. Okay? So the number of wow, that says the number of atoms in the nucleus can vary. What that's supposed to say is the number of neutrons in the nucleus can vary. That means it's changeable, it's not fixed. Okay, so chlorine might have 16 neutrons, but another atom of chlorine might have 18 neutrons. As long as the proton stays the same, the element doesn't change. The neutrons can change. They really just help hold the nucleus together. They don't determine the element. They're neutral. They don't attract electrons. They don't attract protons. They're just stabilizing factors. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the periodic table and see what is going on. Right, remember the periodic table lists the known elements. And starting up here, we have hydrogen. And if you move across, next up is helium. Then we go to the next row. Okay, so these are called rows, moving this way, creative, right? And columns, moving that way. Now. I'm not going to get into the whole layout of the periodic table yet because before we can understand what the whole periodic table means, we have to understand what a cell on the periodic table means. So let's take a look at, say, chlorine. Okay? So chlorine is this element over here. And if we take a look and we zoom in on chlorine, there's a lot of information in this box. The very first piece of information we get is the name. Okay? This name is the element name, and it actually is not universal. If you go to a different uh, country where they speak a different language, they're going to have different names. This down here, the symbol, it is universal. Okay? And remember, we've talked about the symbol before. The first letter is always capital. Always, 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 always capital. The second letter is always lowercase. Unless there is no second letter, then you don't have to worry about it. Okay? So CL, this is not an I, and I is, would be... Um, dotted okay so CL is chlorine this is the symbol that's a universal thing this is what I was talking about earlier this is the atomic number so this tells me the number of protons in chlorine if an atom has 17 protons it's got 17 electrons as well because it's neutral but if it has 17 protons it is chlorine if it doesn't have 17 protons it's not chlorine okay and then this down here we don't really care about it yet I'm gonna cross it off if you wanna give it a label you can it's called atomic mass but like I said we'll talk more about that one later it's an average of a whole bunch of stuff so we're not gonna worry about atomic mass yet but we should know atomic number is the number of protons it determines the element we should be able to find the symbol and we should be able to find the name of an element okay now uh, I do want to show you one more thing on this periodic table so if we go um, uh, back to that first slide of just the periodic table okay, we can see uh, like I said every single element on here has its very own atomic number so these numbers they're not just numbering the elements they're actually telling us some information the reason hydrogen is one is because it has one proton the reason helium is two is because it has two protons rhodium down here it has 45 protons gold 79 protons Okay, cadmium, 48 protons. Okay, so if you can find the element on the periodic table, you already know some stuff about it. Iron has 26 protons because it's neutral. It also has 26 electrons. Okay, carbon has six protons because it's neutral. It also has six electrons. Now, if we want to know stuff about the neutrons, that's a different thing called mass number, and we'll investigate that a little bit later.